This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 185 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show. Aaron Ralston, Bears and Alligators. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Equestrian Collections offers the whole universe of shopping at your fingertips at a price you can afford at equestriancollections.com. Plus, Kentucky Performance Products, simple solutions, scientifically proven at kppusa.com. And Equity Manufacturing, the company that makes cleaning stalls fun at equitymfg.com. Welcome to the Stable Scoop, with weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the Stable, it's every week. We bring you the news through hail or high water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. Sit on down and laugh till your poop calls. It's time again for Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. Stable Scoop. I'm Glenda Geek. And I'm Helena B. And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show right here on the Horse Radio Network. Well, Helena, if, uh, if, if I stop talking... And you don't hear anything more. It's because I've blown away in a tornado. Oh, oh, oh. For some reason, it's February 29th that we're recording this, leap year day. By the way, this day doesn't exist, so probably no one will ever hear this show. <laughs> uh, so you can blow away yeah, and it wouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll be here tomorrow. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of some severe thunderstorms that started about 3 o'clock this morning and have run all morning. And we keep getting the weather alarm going off. And now we're under a tornado warning. And there have been tornadoes in the western part of this, Kentucky. So uh, so it could get interesting while we're recording the show today. It, it could. You know what? I'll just keep it going. If anything happens to you, you know, I'll just keep going. Yeah, I'll that's all you can up. do. You might as well. The you show know, <laughs> for the morning show this morning, for the live show, we had extra songs uploaded in case Jamie ended up talking to herself for an hour and a half. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Which she probably does anyway. I said, call Helena. Just call Helena. <laughs> she can talk to you for a while. Uh, you know, actually, though, the timing of this weather is, uh, I, I don't want to say it's good, but it's, it's interesting in that, you know, uh, you might not have to deal with these kinds of warnings uh, very much. In I the know, because we have an announcement today. You have a big announcement. We'll talk about it a little bit later. It's big for us anyway. I don't know how big it'll be for the listeners, but it's big for us. And we've been holding off telling everybody till, till we got our ducks in a row. But uh, we're going to have a big announcement today after our first guest. Uh, we'll be able to tell everybody what's going on, um, and we're very excited about that. And w- we do have a neat first guest today, and his name is Aaron Ralston. He's the star Woo-hoo! of The Ride on RFD TV. He's a great guy. He uh, runs Cow Horse Productions, and he he's just an all-around terrific horseman. Uh, you know, he does mostly on the western side, but, you know, he does reining, roping, cutting. Uh, he also has a ton of ranch skills, has been around the ranches all his life. He has a great family. He's a very, you, I think you'll probably hear today, he doesn't go through an interview that I've done with him without talking about his family and his kids and his wife. He's a family guy. I just love this guy. He, he, we met him at the World Equestrian Games. And and he's been on a number of the shows since then, and I just love having him on. I'm so excited you get to meet him today, Helena. Yeah, me too. I've heard his name, uh, you know, six ways to Sunday, and I'm I'm really happy to just get the chance to talk to him. Well, why don't we do that? And then coming up a little bit later in the show too, we're going to have our tap and tack and habit pick. And I'm going to be jumping the seasons a little bit here uh, because I'm thinking warm thoughts. It's been 65 the last two days in Lexington, and I know that's going to make you sick hearing that, but it has been. It's been kind of warm, so we're going to be talking about a product that you're going to need to buy here very shortly. Now, before we do that, let's hear about Equestrian Collections Product of the Week. And Oh, and I'm going to preempt this little commercial by saying this was the most embarrassing commercial I've ever had to do. <laughs> okay, You loved it. Shh. What are you kidding? So here it is, Equestrian Collections Product of the Week, Glenn's Most Embarrassing Commercial. Uh-huh. 
Howdy, everybody. Glenn the Geek back with you with Debbie from Equestrian Collections at EquestrianCollections.com. We're here with Equestrian Collections Product of the Week. I want to talk this week about the Enel No Bounce Bra. This is a sports bra, and this is the time of year that we need to start thinking about sports bras. It's finally beginning to be spring, and we're one of going to get out and ride. These bras absolutely will keep you from bouncing. And those of us who ride know how important that is. It's also good for running. It's good for um, really anything you want to do where you want to be comfortable and yet um, not bounce. Um, the They are a little different from your other types of sports bras. They fit like a vest. They come around and you attach them in front like a vest. They do feel a little tight when you first put them on, but as you wear them, they will relax and they will be much more comfortable. And I promise you, they work. They do size a little bit differently than most sports bras, so you would need to go to our site, www.equestriancollections.com, put in email, look at the bras, and then read really carefully the size chart because you do measure yourself differently for this product than you do the other types of sports bras. But I'm telling you, it really works. And I don't have much to offer to this one, Debbie, except that I know that that Chris, uh, your boss there at Question Collection, said this is one of your best sellers of all the products you sell. Yes, it is. It's our top seller, and we've had it for a long time. So people are um, real familiar with the fact that we have carried that. And by the way, this was a product that was featured on Oprah several years ago. So you know if it's featured on Oprah that they've done the research. All right, go to equestriancollections.com and just search for E-N-E-L-L, E-N-E-L-L and it'll bring this up, and you can uh, check it out there. And, and as Debbie said, be aware of the size. Equestriancollections.com. Okay, Helena, it's not every day I get to talk about bras and bouncing. Bouncing there. boobs. <laughs> Leave it to Glenn. He's got it covered. <laughs> it's their number one product. Can you believe that? I, yes, I can. I can. I'm telling you, it's a, it's an issue. Why didn't I, I mean, call not, you and say you record this commercial for them? I, I know, I know. It's embarrassing. I but know. Debbie was a good sport. She just went on when I said, I have nothing to add here. <laughs> well, I have to say that sometimes, <laughs> you know, I'm I a kept my dis- mouth shut. I know you did that. And that alone represents a leap. <laughs> um, but, you know, so sometimes much. it's nice to have. Um, a perspective from the outside, from the <laughs> other side. But you gave no perspective. And in, that, in your case, that's just fine. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Uh, Jennifer was very proud of me that I got through that commercial without making any rude comments at all. Yeah, so, I know. You can't go. help yourself. Just don't, you know, you can't help it. And on that note, I'm sure our first guest is going to be thrilled to follow up a bra commercial. And, and that's Aaron Ralston. He's the star of The Ride, and that's a terrific show on RFD TV. He gets to travel all around the country and the world doing clinics and doing what he does. And let's, let's speak to Aaron and get caught up on what's going on in his life. Well, we're, we're thrilled to have Aaron Ralston on with us right now. And as I mentioned earlier, Aaron and I got to meet uh, a couple years ago in Lexington, Kentucky, and we're so glad to have you back. Well, it is, uh, it's certainly a pleasure to be back, and, uh, and we, we sure did meet under some great circumstances out there. At the World Equestrian Games. That's, uh, yes, sir. We got to meet, and he was kind enough to come over and do an interview on the World Equestrian Games radio show. Now, you own, or are, do you own Cow Horse Productions, or are, are you just a slave to Cow Horse Productions? <laughs> well, I guess you could probably say a little bit of both. Okay. Um, I, uh, I am co- co-owner of uh, the company Cow Horse Productions, and um, yes, between my uh, my two sons and Cow Horse Productions, I am I am a slave laborer to uh, their every wants and needs. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we mentioned that uh, part of Cow Horse Productions is you do a little TV show called The Ride. Yeah, that is our feature. Uh, that is our feature product, and uh, it. it uh, Oh gosh, I guess it's one of the most fun experiences I've ever had in my life, really. Um, you know, we get to the the ride it is all about the journey. It's all about taking uh taking experiences and uh enjoying the process and that that typically, as you know, includes just as many downs as it does ups. 
but uh, but really just taking that in the in the, in the whole scheme of things and enjoying it and getting to see how everybody else deals with their horses and attains their goals, the ups and downs that they go go through. And you know, I have learned an incredible amount uh, going different places and working with with different people. Well, you you have uh, you're doing something with the ride that Helena and I always wanted to do, and that's you get to just travel the country and meet cool horse people everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. You know, it, <laughs> it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. You know, <laughs> sorry, sorry, honey, I've got to go for a week and and do this or that. Uh, and then uh, now that you mention it, um, I'll go ahead and tell you the next. Um, big project we have and it's going to be hard i've been preparing for it every moment i can uh we will be traveling to uh the big island of hawaii uh the end of march and we're going to be spending some time there and pretty much do an entire season while we're there uh exploring the uh, pan yolo the cowboy uh the hawaiian cowboy culture and uh, and really seeing how important that the horse is to the Paniolo community, um, and how how thick the horse culture is over there, you'd be really surprised. Uh, all you think about uh, is surfing and uh, and Jimmy Buffett, you know, <laughs> drinks margaritas and mai tais when you go to Hawaii. Well, but I'm sure actually, you're not going to have any of those while you're there. Well, of course not. I, like I said, this is going to be all work. Oh, we're gonna fi- and, we're gonna feel really bad for you, and, and we'll be thinking of you. As yeah, you're, pretty you're much. We just there. hate you right now, Aaron. Yeah. That's, but you okay. know, talking about surprises, <laughs> talking about surprises. Since you do get to travel so much, and you know, you're you obviously you know your stuff. You know your way around a horse. What? Uh, about this journey or these journeys do you find surprising what are you learning along the way that you perhaps didn't realize you needed to learn (laughs) oh well okay that that list right there (laughs) is almost exactly what i learned um you know we all sit back and feel sorry for ourselves and we think well if only this if only that if only i had the opportunities that this person or that person has then i could do it too well, it turns out that I have not met one person who was born into their success. And the, the most common threads among these people, these mentors and idols that I've been able to meet and witness is obviously their work ethic. They've created many of their own opportunities, and it's not easy for them. And even though we, you know, everybody tends to sit back and, and think about what a glorious life it is to, uh, you know, train horses or be a rancher or whatnot, uh, there is uh, a tremendous amount of blood, sweat, and tears. And actually, the more successful the person, the, uh, the harder that their lifestyle probably is, because they not only had to get there, but they have to maintain it. And... And because of that, they, every single successful person I have been around is a student and they are very humble and they are continuously trying to improve themselves and learn. And so that was inspirational to me to know that, okay, well, you know, I'll just keep working. I could get there too. Um, and really helped me gain the confidence to go out there and, and admit to other people especially my peers, that I don't have all the answers. And if they have got any hints, could they please let me know? <laughs> it's, I was thinking about this the other day. Actually, I was talking with a friend about how people define success. And, you know, when you go into the horse world, when you, you go into working with horses because you love horses, not because you love money. And so I think it's hard yeah. to expect to be um, to define success financially in the horse world because you know if you if you love money well then you're you're going to be successful at making money but if you love horses then you're going to be successful in working with horses but you know I guess it's what it sounds like to me is as you're you're meeting these people that they are actually defining their success in terms of happiness um you know contentment Absolutely. You know, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got a couple little stories here that, that goes along with that. And number one 
and it applies to horse trainers as much as ranchers. But uh, uh, I wrote a book with a gentleman, and he wrote in that book that ranchers are the only people he knows that will work 80 hours a week so they don't have to work 40. <laughs> It's true. That's and, true. Uh, think about yeah. it. And, yep. and horse people are the same way. Yeah. And and you know, in the in the quickest way to make a million dollars in the horse world, in the horse business, is to start with two million. That's right. You because, know what I just you know what I just learned, and I'm known as America's horse husband because I married into this 25 years ago. I yeah. this last five minutes, I've just learned I should have married an investment banker. That would have been much. Yeah, more yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you look, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is <laughs> that's the secret to a successful horse life. Actually, right there. the other way yeah. around, Glenn. Jen right. should have married. Yeah, that's true thing. too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's at home. She's at home right now, going, "Oh, you don't know how many times I've thought about that." <laughs> <laughs> Now, you're, now, is your oh, wife God. horsey, too? Is your whole family horsey? Yes, and I am so fortunate for that. I mean, knock on wood right now. Um, she and I met through horse experiences, and uh, that has been amazing. She she knew uh, she knew what the lifestyle, lifestyle included um, entailed before, before entering into it, so she wasn't too blind coming into our marriage. And I'm very, very lucky that my two kids, they're, they're only six and five or six and four right now, but they, uh, they, they love to ride too. My four year old is, uh, we're actually saddling his horse right now. Somebody's out there tied to the trailer and he's just going to hang around with us all day. And he plays good guys and bad guys on his horse all day. (laughs) And, uh, so it's, it's really, you know, I'm gone a lot. I travel a lot. I do a lot of clinics, a lot of horse expos. But when I'm home, you know, my kids get to get to be with me, and they get to be with me all day. So that's a great job to have. And they get to uh, this weekend. I travel to a horse show, and uh, my wife is going to compete. My two kids are going to go with me, and so they're going to be with me the entire yeah. time. You kind so. of understated how good your wife is. She is she she has won her share of uh, competitions in this country. Yeah, yeah, you just you just hit the nail on the head. Um, and and in her mind, I I always <laughs> understate her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is very Maybe true. You work on that, Aaron. Maybe you. Can. <laughs> oh, I work on it all the time, but I get it wrong. But anyway, that's a whole Listen, different. Uh, that's that, a whole Alina. different radio show. I, I gotta think tell that you, has to do I gotta with t- Oprah. I gotta tell you, yeah. Lena. I follow Aaron on Facebook, and one of the, this is a compliment, by the way. So so I hope you don't take it wrong, but. You yeah. you have more thoughtful and family oriented posts than any of the other, let's say, major clinicians or, or TV people that I have that I follow, and I like that about you. You you know, it, there's a very human errand that everybody gets to know, and 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 I like that. It's not just marketing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I I you know I have a lot of my peers and my wife to 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 thank for that. It's, it'd be real easy to get a big head in this business. Um, people tell you you're pretty special all the time. Um, and my wife does a really good job of reminding me how special I truly am. <laughs> and, and also, and also, and I add on that she's a wonderful person, but yeah, we got to meet humble. her too. So. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and you know, and I, I still compete and I, I compete against my peers who are all, com- you know, completely, um, experts in their own right. And, uh, you know, when I go to the horse show and they turn a cow out and I'm doing a raining pattern or, and then I work a cow, that horse and that cow do not care one bit that I have a TV show. They don't care one bit how many, how many uh, companies are stitched on my shirt, and they are more than happy to make a fool out of me. So um, <laughs> between, between my wife and competing, um, it, it, is able, it, is, it is, you know, able to keep me grounded and uh, keep me in line. You know, but my wife, she's a big part of everything I do. Like you said, she's she's been a she's a phenomenal rider. She's won world championships in multiple disciplines, and uh, she's she does a great job raising raising me and the two boys. Well, you're 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 a busy dude. You got a lot going on. You you uh, are clearly very talented. Hawaii's coming up. When did you say that's coming up next year? This year? We are going uh, for spring break. We're going to take the kids again. Again, it's uh, it's going to be great family experience. I hope uh, we're taking kids with us and uh, going March, the end of March, 
And I would hope that those episodes will be uh, will be hitting the air sometime in uh, May. Okay. Um, as early as May. And, uh, yeah. They, they just, air on RFD right. TV, right? RFD TV. It, uh, it is on at 9 o'clock uh, Mountain Time, Monday, and as well as 11 a.m. Monday morning on RFD TV. He has yeah. an ep- episode coming up, Helena, on uh, performance principles for riding bareback and bridalists, which yeah. uh, which which we love because uh, you, you know to become an accomplished rider, you you have to know how to ride bareback, and riding bridalists is even even more. You know, we always say in the English side, you better learn to ride without stirrups if you're jumping, because at some point you're not going to have stirrups when you're jumping a course because you know, <laughs> exactly. your feet are going to fall out and you're not getting them back, and you better know how to ride that jump. Well, um, yeah, exactly. I, you know, and I just got myself a really, really sweet quarter horse, and he's definitely mm-hmm. the kind of um, kind of horse that I could take the tack off of and get confident. You know, a he's comfortable, Perfect. he's he's sane. So I think we might try a little. I think I'll start with bareback first. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the thing about it is uh, is that you know I I, I train for competition. And then I coach people across the country for safety. And both of those, Glenn, like you said, when you're jumping, you are in competition and for safety. You are preparing yourself for something that you've never seen or done before in a situation that you could not reenact. And it has to happen in the heat of the moment. And if you cannot, if you, if when you're riding bareback and bridalist, it's not so much to, you know, we didn't do this so much to show off that we can do this. It's to see that, you know, you can accomplish this and that and the other, you know, and have that communication because I dang sure ride in a, in a saddle and a bit all the time to enhance what I'm teaching my horses. But you do those things, you gain your balance. You also get to diagnose, you know, where any holes are at in your horse. And so, you know, when you come to that heat of the moment, that, uh, that critical point, you know, is your horse going to check in with you? Is your horse going to check out? And so, you know, that's that's what I really want people to understand about the bareback and bridalist is that it is it, it's not so much to say, look what I can do, but it's look what you can do, and if you can do this, then you can really do other things as well. It's almost like the trust building exercises you did at camp when you were a kid. It's that same kind of thing. You're building that trust between you and your horse. Um, yeah, you know the the thing where you used to fall backwards and you expected everybody to catch you. Um, yeah, it's it's that it's that same thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, I trust my 100%. horse before I trust those people. We did that when I was, <laughs> yeah. the and I, man, I wouldn't trust those people as far as I could throw them. But I think I'd ride blind, bareback, bridalist, and in, in the dark and the snow on my horse. At this point. <laughs> but you're, no, you're right, Aaron. It's it's about it's like emergency handling in non-emergency situations anything to take that panic away from you so that you actually have this plan yeah. this subconscious yeah. plan you know that your body and your horse know what to do even when your brain might be you know exactly yeah. and and the horse and the horse is the is is our best reflective mirror you know you take and, and the greatest thing about going bareback and bridalist is that you might not want to hear it but that horse is going to tell you if you're too tight, if you're leaning the wrong way, if, you know, that horse, and that's, I, I believe, why we, uh, why we are so ingrained with our horses is because it's, it's our way to manipulate um, nature and life. And, uh, and if we want to get as, be- as good as we can, you know, we need to take some of the artificial stuff off and let that horse tell us what we're doing. You know, because that horse is going to be honest. They're not going to come up with a good line of BS just to make us feel good. You know, if we're if we are sending them the wrong message, they're going to tell us. Now, um, the people we work with, they might they might talk behind our backs. The horse is going to, always going to talk, you know, right to your face. And that's the great thing about, you know, the horse in general, if you want it to be, it can be the best teacher for you, and they can teach you everything you need to know to be able to work with them. It's just you knowing know, how to listen. You're right, how to listen. I, I have a quick story to, to underscore that. Is uh, Aaron, you may not know this, but last year I, I tore my ACL and uh, mm. had surgery to repair it, and so now I'm just coming back and getting back in the saddle. And so, um, you know, my quarter horse was trained. He's, he's only five and a half, so 
he started out his life as a Western pleasure horse, and I am slowly transitioning him to hunt seat. Uh, but what yeah. I found was that we're wonderful going to the right. Yeah, you know, anything to the right, he's strong, I'm strong. Going to the left is a whole nother story. And, you know, he's, oh, what a nice sound. What he's saying to me is, hey, honey, you're still really weak on that left side. Get back into the gym and keep working that left leg because, yeah. you know, he's, he bulges in to the left. And, you know, you sit there and you're saying, oh, my gosh, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? You stop. You listen to what he's telling you. And he's saying you're still too weak on your left side. Oh, exactly. Okay. <laughs> but it takes <laughs> that minute. You have to you yeah. have to say, what are you telling me instead of oh, what are you doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Like you have to take exactly. You have to make sure you're not the victim and that the horse isn't, and, and you're not trying to to tell, to make it out like the horse is trying to be bad. That the horse has an attitude problem, and like, well, uh, and, and that's know. that's my pet peeve is that many horses, some horses do have some 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 bad wiring in their brains. I'll I'll admit that, but most horses, if they've got an attitude problem, it's not because they want to have that attitude problem. They are telling us that we are not, we're not telling them what they need to be told. And so they're, they're getting, they're developing an attitude. And that is exactly what you're saying with that story. Couldn't be better. Some of, some of them have more, uh, more, uh, have better cues than others in telling you that. And I had a, my driving pony, what I'd call my lifetime pony, uh, that I learned to drive with. We didn't know a thing about driving when I got this pony when we, after we first met, and Jennifer didn't know a thing about driving. And we, we got a little Amish driving pony from the auction, saved him from the slaughterhouse. And Great. And she was terrific. Every time I would do something wrong, she would throw her head. And she would mm-hmm. keep throwing her head until I got it right, and then she'd stop. We, you know, backing up, we could not figure out how to back up this pony. And finally, she'd throw her head every time I did something wrong. And then finally, when I realized you just touch her on the butt with the whip, she backed right up, and she stopped throwing her head. That was her yeah. cue. Now, some of them are, you know, are not quite that. A lot of them are more Articulate. subtle than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But that means exactly. you just have to be, you have to listen a little bit more closely. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the challenge is that, is that you know, even what I'm finding in, in the great people that I get to meet is that, uh, you know, I, I have come a long ways in my horsemanship and, and my ability to work with a horse. But uh, there's a lot of areas where I can I can fine tune that. I'm missing things all the time, and uh, and I don't I don't think anybody has ever figured it out. I don't think anybody has completely arrived. Uh, there are there are masters in their own areas, but n- nobody will ever master it all. So it, it, that's that's what that's why it's got to be about the ride. That's why it can't be about the destination. Because you're never going to get there. I love, yeah. I love that in your name, too. Uh, the name of the show says it all. I mean, the ride. Let me ask you this before we let you go. I know we're running out of time here. What You've ridden all over this country. Where's the most beautiful place you've ridden? Uh, well, you know, it is, it is right in my own backyard. And uh, I live in the mountains of western Colorado. And I didn't realize it was the most beautiful place in the world until uh, until I left for a few years and and I get to travel all over Europe, Canada, all over the United States, Hawaii and uh I love Hawaii. But Western Colorado, if you want to see something a little bit different, you drive 20 miles and you're at a different elevation and you've got different terrain. And uh you know, you can be up in the aspen trees and the pine trees or you can go down in the pinyons and the sagebrush. And uh, Western Colorado is uh, is the place I always love coming back to. Well, that's that's a great answer, and it is a very beautiful place. Well, thank you so much, Aaron, for joining us. Don't forget, it's called The Ride. It's on RFD TV, and you said it's on Mondays. They can check their local listings, too, for, for exact times in, in your time zone. And we'll Absolutely. post links to we he also um, there's also Cow Horse Productions. We will put a link to Cow Horse Productions dot com on the Stable Scoop website. So all you have to remember is Stable Scoop and anything you've ever wanted to know about Aaron will be posted up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well almost anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Probably Aaron. a few things you don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate Thanks it. Thanks so much, Aaron. All right. Thank you, guys. Always great. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. 
Well, we're going to get to the big announcement we have here uh, very shortly. But first, we have to talk about equity manufacturing. You know, we had Joseph on last week talking about the pitchforks. We, we, find, we got our pitchforks in now, and we have them here. So we're gonna, we haven't had a chance to use them yet, but hopefully this Sunday when we go out, we do the barn on Sundays. So we're going to get a chance to try out the new pitchforks. I know you love yours. Yes, so, I do. And uh, I, I, you're, that's one of the only few uh, things uh, that doesn't breathe that I saw you bond with so much. So <laughs> It's true. I, but, no one was more surprised than, than I was. But, you know, uh, in addition to the, um, the pitchforks, Equity also provides fencing solutions uh, for common horse fencing like pipe panel, white PVC, and uh, T-post field fencing, which is what we have in, in our back pasture. Um, and their products are designed to make your fencing safer. And this is what I like about Equity is, is it, their products are all very thoughtful. It's definitely uh, – they're providing solutions, which, of course, I just love because I love to solve people's problems. Um, fencing needs three components in order to make a horse safe. Uh, physical strength, high visibility, and then a mental deterrent. So most fencing has only two of those needs. What equity, equity does is they provide the third. So, for example, pipe panel fencing is really strong. It's visible, but it's hard to keep the horses from playing across it without a hot wire. So Equity makes a clamp that lets you put the hot wire in front of that top rail or middle rail or whatever. In some cases, the bottom rail for horses who like to stick their big old noses underneath. Underneath to get the grass, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Martin is amazing at that. He's like a little gymnast. I don't know how he does it, but he gets his head all the way under my bottom rail. So Equity makes these clamps that let you mount a poly rope hot wire pretty much wherever you need it on that, that PVC fencing. So every product that they make that Equity builds and sells is tested for years before they release it for sale. Glenn and I know Joseph. (laughs) We know. He's OCD like us. He's not going to let anything come out of his facility that hasn't been tested to the hill. Um, They even have a core group of people from all over the country, from the heat of Texas to the cold of North Dakota, that test their products. Now, Equity's products are a bit more expensive. But you've got the testing, you've got the science, you've got the solution, and you have really good quality. So that makes them a great value in the long run. If you don't believe me and you want to read more about their products and their testing and all the wonderful things that they make, you can go to equitymfg.com to learn all about their products. I can't wait to try out my pitchforks this week, too. I'll let you know how it goes, okay? It's really, yeah, you, their horse has been approved, all definitely. Right. I'm going to find out. We'll let you know next week how I did with the pitch, great pitchfork test of Equity Products. Uh, all right. Now it's time for the big announcement. Dun, dun, dun. Well, Helena, we've been teasing this big announcement, and I think it's time to tell, tell all the listeners what's going on. And all right. It's not so much a big announcement for them as it is for Jennifer and I and a little bit for the Horse Radio Network. Uh, we're moving. Jennifer and I are packing up the studios, and we're moving. To France? You know, I thought about that because the next World Equestrian Games is there, and my last name is French. But being, being that I flunked three years of French in high school, I mean, I was awful. I got like D's and F's. So I ruled that out because that wasn't going to work too well. I figured if I couldn't learn in high school, I'm never going to learn it now when I'm 50 years old. So we decided to go south. Uh, we are actually moving to Ocala, Florida. Oh, <gasps> I know. Silence, and there's a hush throughout the (laughs) studios. My eyes, people, my eyes are bugging out of my head. My mouth is open. My jaw is on the ground. Well, I got to tell you. And I knew this was coming. (laughs) We went down uh, about two weeks, three weeks ago, and we looked at a number of little farms. uh, And actually, prices are very good down there right now. Unfortunately, for them, the housing economy is a bit depressed. And for us, that's a good thing when you want to move there. Uh, and, you know, when we moved to Lexington, we moved here because the World Equestrian Games were here, and we did the World Equestrian Games radio show. So we moved here about two years before the World Equestrian Games, and we did the radio show. And, you know, we, of course, did the live or did the radio show all through the World Equestrian Games. And we knew after that was over that we didn't have any family here, that we probably wouldn't be staying in Lexington, although we absolutely love Lexington. It's beautiful. It's a great place to live. I would recommend it to everybody. There, you know, you have your occasional ice storms and things like that. And, and tornadoes were bad weather today. But... But it's a beautiful place to live. But, you know, we also knew that uh, Wonderlust was going to get the best of us at some point, and 
My brother lives in a, in a beautiful uh, equestrian community in Ocala. This is just west of, of Chester Weber's big farm down there. Oh, he, Chester Weber of driving Chester Weber? Yes. It, so that's where Oh, we're, how convenient for you. I know. It's fun. So we're going to be <laughs> doing that. We're moving to this equestrian community. It's a beautiful place. There's about 400 homes, and 300 of them have horses. And we're just so excited to be moving there. We're going to have a little three-acre farm. We'll be able to keep the horses at home. And I'll be able to take up driving again because you can drive. There's a bunch of drivers that drive through the community. There's miles of trails that Jennifer can ride on. And that was the other big reason for the move is Jennifer really wanted to do some serious trail riding. And you can't do that in Lexington. There's just not enough trails. It's all big thoroughbred farms. Right. And right. You don't have the connectivity. You don't have the daily use. The, right. It, and yeah, Lexington is big in terms of the number of horses because it's thoroughbred horses. They're farmed, but not necessarily horsey in the sense that you can use the town and doesn't right. have a lot of resources to just get out and ride. And as we're going to learn when we get our next guest on here, who's going to help uh, help with the excitement here of moving to Ocala, Florida, you know, there are just hundreds of miles of trails around Ocala. It's well known for its trail riding, and we're going to learn a little bit more about that. So we're very excited. It's a, it's a cute little house. And the gentleman that we're renting it from initially here is very, very nice guy. And there's huge, the huge live oaks that must be hundreds of years old with all the Spanish moss all over the property. It's just beautiful. So, and you, I just did send you pictures here of it so you know what it looks like. Um, it's just very Florida, isn't it? Just it's, make my bed. I want, you know, <laughs> I need a little nightstand in my room. Okay. Okay. No problem. We could even get the internet connection for you. That's fine. No That's problem. fine. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's introduce our next guest. We have Jay Bailey on. She is the president and CEO of the Ocala Marion Chamber of Commerce. That's Marion County. Uh, that's the county that Ocala resides in down there. Well, good morning, Jay. Well, good morning, Horse Radio Network. We are so excited. Do you know how hard that was for me to, to squelch our <laughs> <laughs> screams of excitement of having your Horse Radio Network in the horse capital of the world, Ocala, Florida. You described it perfectly to your listeners, you know, rolling hills, beautiful farms, live oaks, and a ton of equestrian events. Uh, There has to be, you know, more than 60 events on any given month um, between hits and and you mentioned Chester Weber's um, beautiful event coming up at Live Oak in March. We have trail rides benefiting our not-for-profits all the time. And uh, you could not be coming to a better place. We are so excited. Well, we're excited, too. You know, uh, let's just touch on Chester Weber's place a little bit. It is four, get this, Helena, it's 4,000 acres. What? Yeah, it's seven square miles of property that he's on down there. It's an absolutely, and it's, it is one of the most beautiful properties I've ever seen. Spectacular. And, isn't it? It's just it is beautiful. And, is Chester Weber married? Oh, yeah, oh, yes. he is, actually. <laughs> and he's married to a jumper. Uh, uh, Perfect! Yes. <gasps> so there, right, you know actually, what? Ocala needs no PR. That's all I need to know. <laughs> now Chester Weber's mom uh, comes from the Campbell Soup family, right? So that's where the money came from to purchase the place and to have that nice facility they have. There. I'm just happy to hear that there's one tract of land that that's big and oh, still it's pretty tack. big. You can drive for what about a half an hour and not drive around his property. I mean, exactly, it's... exactly. And the and... Live Oak International is coming up this month, yep. right? Yep, twenty third, twenty fourth, and. You talk about uh, just a spectator's dream, um, the, the four-in-hand over the water hazards and all the beautiful VIP tents and the people in their hats and the beautiful landscape, amazing food and champagne. I mean, it just, it just the setting is something straight out of a movie. It's, it's just spectacular. They have a car show on Sundays for the antique cars, and this year, too, they're adding a hunter-jumper show to it. So they're going to have some jumpers in there the one night, too. So. Uh, they're doing uh, they're doing a lot of new things there, and unfortunately, get this, Jay. What's that? We're moving the week after. Oh gosh! <laughs> well, it's always next year. <laughs> no, right. I've been dying to go to this for years. And we're moving it's, the week it's after. A, it's wonderful, and there's plenty of events coming up. I'm sure you toured the Florida Horse Park, Florida oh, Agriculture and Horse Park, yeah. and it's just. Um, again, it's a big set aside of 525 acres, just um, 
dedicated to our local agricultural heritage and horses. You know, one of the things I noticed that was different, I, we, we, we just got done uh, end of last year with a trip to Norco, California, which, which they call the horse, uh, uh, horse Town USA. And it is interesting place. It's, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's got more horses than people in this tiny little town. But one, and of course, we live in Lexington, which is it got the big rolling farms and absolutely beautiful scenery. But what I found, we took the whole tour around Ocala. We even went into the national forest and things like that. But what I found was that there's a lot, uh, there's a lot more horse people and riders in Ocala because you have smaller farms with horses right. everywhere. Right. Right. And um, the the formats are just wonderful. We have six hundred. Um, horse farms all sizes and every breed every breed is represented here in Ocala Marion County including the gypsy vanner i don't know if you've ever seen yep. that breed or we not love oh, yeah. gypsy vanners oh, yeah. but yeah. they they look like when they're in the field um running they look like they just need a horn in the middle of their yes. head and they could be unicorns you're right you're absolutely right <laughs> you know what else we saw as we were going in and out of the development where we're going to be living of course there's you know 300 of the homes have horses and they're all 3 <laughs> to 5 acre tracks and i think you know which one i'm talking about yes um you know when we when we were driving out Every day, there's this guy who works with Pasifinos. And you know, Helena, how the Pasifinos have the quick gait? Yeah. You know, it looks like they're dancing. Well, he was working them every day. We'd go out. It's the only time I've ever driven by a farm where they're working the Pasifinos, and you see them out there doing their little dance steps. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so it was, it's a unique experience for sure. The other thing they have down there that Jennifer is so excited about, and we got to go take a, we took a nice long hike the one day we were down there on this, and that is the Florida Greenway can tell us about that it really is a, a ribbon of of land that runs through our county and it was originally set aside acquired by the federal government for the cross florida barge canal and when congress wisely nixed the idea of cutting florida in half we would have ruined our you know fresh water supply if we'd done that um there was this set aside land so there was a movement um to keep the land forever in public trust and the Florida Greenway sits, uh, I mean, the Florida Horse Park sits on that Greenway. And there is connectivity um, with, from, with your horses, um, with bicycles, um, on foot, all the way from um, almost across the state now. And uh, very soon you, you could uh, literally ride a horse from one coast to the other. Uh, without it's, a like lot of hun- it's like, what, 100 more miles long. It's huge. Yes. Yes, it's huge and huge. So the connectivity there and the trails are remarkable. And so think about that, Helena. You could ride all the way from the Gulf of Mexico all the way across to the Atlantic Ocean. And I will. <laughs> Put that on your bucket list, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's neat. They have, uh, they have the, uh, what do they call the entry points where you can park your trailers? They have a name for those. The uh, Trailheads. Trailheads. The trailheads. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. they have all these fancy bathrooms, and you can set up, and you can camp there, and you could like you could go over for a day. And what's really cool is they have the horse trails separated from the bike and hiking trails. Correct. So you don't have that problem that we have in other places where where the two are competing and always fighting and carrying on. Mm-hmm. It's a completely separate experience. So our plan is, my brother's wife also rides and does trails. Is we're going to go over, and the two wives can go out on their horses, and from the same spot, we can go out onto the bike trails. Isn't that great? Uh, yeah, that's really cool. It's, it's fantastic. So are you going to broadcast your radio program yep. from the back of a horse? No, no. We, we, don't have, we don't do that too often. The technology doesn't allow that quite yet. I but. like the way you think, though, Jack. <laughs> I think that would be a blast. But we will be coming live every morning on the morning show from Ocala, Florida, here starting in the beginning of April. We're actually moving the end of this month. So, Well, that, that actually begs the question, yep. Is what's, how's Internet connectivity down there? Well, that was interesting, too. That is one problem we had. We looked at a bunch of farms, and unfortunately, these farms, I would say they, a lot of them are on dirt roads, but you can't say that. Mm-hmm. They're on sand roads uh, mm-hmm. in Florida, mm-hmm. and they just don't have cable internet. They, they'll have DSL, but we can't do what we do running the network with DSL. The connection's just not good enough. So it, we ruled out a lot of farms, and I have to tell you about one we saw. You'll love this story, Jay. Uh, but this particular place that we found in my brother's equestrian neighborhood is like only two of the streets in that entire neighborhood have cable internet, and this is one of them. Oh, good grief. And uh, so it was just a perfect scenario. It just worked out so well. 
uh, and it's on Wagon Wheel Lane, Helena. Oh, How perfect okay. is that? I'm a driver. You could not make that up. <laughs> That's terrific. So, <laughs> so it, it's, uh, we're looking forward to that, too. So we do have cable Internet there. We'll be able to run the network from, from that particular spot. Now, i got to tell you, there's, tell us a little bit about, and I'll tell you our experience in the forest. Tell us a little bit about the forest. Well, I'm a little bit of an expert because I actually live in the in the national oh, do forest. You? On I do during the during the weekend, and I live in downtown Ocala during the week. So, um, kind of the best of both worlds. But the national forest is the largest national forest east of the Mississippi. So huge set aside of acreage in our in our county, which really distinguishes us. If you look at a map of Marion County. Uh, a large amount is just set aside that will never be touched. So within that national forest, you talked about the trails. There was camping and hiking. Um, we have three first magnitude springs in our county, so massive volumes of fresh water being pushed out of the aquifer. We have um, you know places for people to, to picnic. And it's just um, – uh, a, a wide variety of, of landscapes. So you've got the you know, sand, sand hills, um, and then you've got the swamp areas. So you never get tired of looking at it. I think it's absolutely re- beautiful. And a lot of black bears, by well, the way. That's where my story comes in. So we went <laughs> okay. to look at this farm, 14 acres in the middle, I mean the middle of the, the forest. And our GPS takes us out there, and, you know, we're, we're driving, and it's nice paved roads and everything. And then there's little villages in, in the forest where you can buy stuff and the grocery store and stuff. And then we start getting out further into the forest, and the, the <laughs> GPS takes us down this road. Well, the road goes from paved to sand, and then very quickly goes from sand to pretty much not existent. <laughs> and the GPS insists that we can get through this road. Well, the further we go back this road, I'm realizing, thank God we have a Jeep because I'm going to need to four-wheel drive here pretty soon in the <laughs> sand. And then this lady, old lady, she must have been 80 years old, driving a bread pickup truck, comes up the other way, pulls beside us, and has us roll down her window. And she says, Sonny, unless you have four-wheel drive, you're fixing to get stuck. <laughs> and, I, and I said, I think we're going to follow you, and we're going to head back out that way, and we're going to find a different way to go where we're going. So we, we ended up figuring out where we were going on a paved road. And we get there, and there's this farm. It's a quaint little interesting place that, that's for sale there. And the house is very eclectic. You would have loved it, Helena. It's a very eclectic house. And it has little paddocks, but it's in the middle of the forest, okay? And, and the, there's a little path that leads to the forest trails that go all throughout the forest. That was all great, except there's a pond about 10 feet behind the back of the house. <laughs> and I'm thinking, and I asked the realtor, I said, now, I heard there's bears and wild boar in the forest. And she said, yep, we have those in Florida. And I'm going, okay, she answered that kind of funny. I said, did these people have cats, and are there any left? And she said, well, I don't know if they lost any animals. And she was being real vague about all that. And then, and then I said, there's a pond 10 feet behind the house and right beside the paddocks. Are there alligators in there? And she said, yep, we have those in Florida. And I'm going, okay, this is way too much nature for me. We're not living in the middle of the forest. Uh, do, so was she right that you have all of that in there? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I live on the banks of the St. John's River, and we frequently see alligators, um, manatees. They're, they're harmless. Oh, um, you get manatees? Yes. Oh, cool. Yes, they're precious. And they're large. And then um, bears. We have bears quite frequently visit our house. So we have to all be very fastidious about putting away our garbage because they love to get in garbage cans, just like Yogi Bear. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not much different than you'd say the, the precautions you have to take for coyotes or raccoons or. Correct. You know, Correct. Other Except wild- it's bears and alligators. <laughs> well, every, all critters have teeth, you know. Yeah, but it's- your alligator will eat your cat. So I, have will a coyote? Cat, I, have, I have two cats and, again, live on the edge of the river, and they've survived for 12 years there. Oh, okay. Knock that, on that make okay. you feel any better? <laughs> well, see, and, Glenn, you know, there's house cats and then there's outdoor cats. There's the outdoor cats oh. that got kitty survival skills. I would That's put my, my indoor cat up against any alligator, let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, no, I know, beast and bear. <laughs> His name is the beast. Does that tell you something? <laughs> Can't wait to meet him. <laughs> So your now, listeners your listeners wait a minute, thinking. wait a minute. I need to, I got some questions here. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I got some questions. Okay. Right. When you've been there, I have not. I okay. will get there when you move there. But I, I've got some questions about everyday living. Okay. Sure. Um, 
one of the things, so Ocala is pretty much center, you know, when you're looking east to west, it's sort of centered maybe a little bit to right. the west of the state. Um, and it's right, to give people perspective, it's about an hour and a half north of Ocala. Of Orlando. I'm Orlando, I'm sorry. Orlando, Orlando. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so how far is it from each coast? You know, what, what about people who like the water and, and then what's the temperature like? Because it's obviously different than South Florida, which I know has a, a, its, own, its own microclimate. Tell us a little bit about the, the climate there and then, you know, in relation to the rest of Florida, what Ocala has. Well, one thing that surprises people about Ocala, um, we have we have seasons, and trees change, the, the leaves change color, and it's absolutely beautiful in the fall around here with the reflection of the leaves in the water. It's just spectacular. Um, and last winter, we had 33 days below 32, and this winter, we've basically not had a winter. We've had a couple of little cold snaps, and today it's 85 degrees and the sun is shining, so it's a gorgeous day. <laughs> In our location, um, we are equidistant between Miami and Atlanta, and um, 40 miles south of the University of Florida, and we're really like in a, almost a research triangle between University of Florida, University of Central Florida, Orlando, and University of South Florida. Um, both the, the University of Florida has a really strong, uh, as you, you all know, um, equine vet program, um, and our local State College here, College of Central Florida, has a strong equestrian um, program as well. So that would be interesting for you all to follow up with that. But um, you can get to either coast. Uh, Daytona, you can be straight out State Road 40 and be there in an hour and 20 minutes, and you can be in the west coast, the Gulf of Mexico, in 50 minutes. So any, and we have three rivers here in Marion County if you don't want to go to the coast. So good. So for water babies like me, it's, yes. it, it could be a day trip. It could be easy day trip or weekend or whatever. It's so exactly. You need Funny a to do. Salt. I have salt in my veins. It's so I, I can't be too far from the ocean. As Glenn and Jennifer were trying to get me to move to Kentucky for the longest time. And I, I said, you don't have any salt water there. And they said, well, they'll, they'll dump a big bucket of salt in the fountains. <laughs> Not quite the same, right? <laughs> and Okay, so you've got these, uh, so you've got seasons, you've, you've got some cooler days, and, and now, what about the hot? When it gets real, real hot, how do people, hand, especially horse people, how do you deal? What, do you ride early in the morning, evenings, what? Pretty pretty much. Um, everybody avoids um, getting out in mid, the midday sun, because it does get very warm here in, in the summer, so early morning or late evening is the best bet, and particularly with daylight savings time turning pretty quickly, you know, you can ride as late as 7.30, 8, 8.30 at night and still have okay. daylight. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And my, my, my brother said he moved there, what, three years ago from Maryland, and he said the first summer was really bad for them. They, they weren't used to it, and it was, it was hot. And, and I, I have spent a whole summer down in Florida, so I know what the heat's like. I, Jennifer has no idea what she's getting into. Um, <laughs> and then he did say the second year, and now the third year wasn't bad at all because they kind of got you do kind of get used to it. Is that true? Well, I've lived here all my life, so I, I guess I'm, yeah. I'm very used to it. But the, one of the nice things about where we're situated is the East Coast winds collide with the West Coast winds pretty much every afternoon in the summer. So there is that cooling down, that relief with, with thunderstorms in the afternoon. Yeah, and uh, we, we look forward to those. That's good. Yeah, and and yeah. do the horses like that too? I, I mean, my horses love the rain. They love those big, fat raindrops in the summertime. They, they don't want to go anywhere. Like a free horse wash, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, this is great. I'm yeah, I, I, we're go very, ahead. I was just going to say we're kind of running out of time here, but we're very excited about this. Where can people find your website? It's Ocala CC, which is Ocala Chamber of Commerce, OcalaCC.com. Well, I and, think what we yeah. should do is soon after we get there, we probably should come over and just do, do a show right from your office. Perfect. Perfect. We should do and, that. And I'll invite a couple of guests in. Um, my good friend Summer Best is the executive director of the Florida Horse Park. And, oh, cool. Um, her house is attached to her barn, so I've stayed out there a couple of times, and, you know, you hear the horse kick all night. It's fun. <laughs> Only in Ocala. Oh. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Jay, president of the Ocala Marion County Chamber of Commerce. We appreciate you being on, and we'll see you in a month. We'll we be knocking delighted. on your door. See you soon. <laughs> right. Thank you Thanks, so much. Jay. Well, that's the exciting news, Helena. I'm so glad. You're going to come visit me right away. You know, it's cheap oh, to gosh, fly to yeah. Orlando. Yes, yes. Everybody I love is now in Florida. <laughs> my two best friends, my mom, my cousins. Oh, yeah. You know what? And that's, uh, that's one of the reasons that we're moving, too, is uh, nobody visited us in Lexington, but everybody goes to Florida a couple times a year, so we'll be able to see them. Plus, the other reason I didn't mention there is you know, and most of the listeners that have listened to this show for three years know, we are huge Disney fans, Jennifer and I. You are. We love Disney. And we are gonna and when you're a Florida resident, you get the annual pass is cheap. So it's like sixty dollars a month for the two of you. And so if you go one time, you're it's like eighty five dollars a piece to get in every day. Um, so it's a huge savings to have the Florida annual pass and we're only an hour away, so we're we're gonna be going to Disney a lot. My brother has the annual pass, so we'll get to go down with them and we're really looking forward to that. Plus Jennifer just She's just so excited about the trails and, the, and having trails right out our back door. So we're going to have about two acres fenced in, and that's certainly plenty for our, our horse beaker. And, of course, he has to wear a muzzle nine months of the year here in Kentucky, so down there there isn't so much grass, and that's actually good for him. We can, we can control his intake a little better. Yes, 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 uh, yes. We, he won't have to wear his nasty old muzzle anymore. Uh, yeah. So that's all good. And then we'll have a place for our doggy to run in the back yard. And she's going to be very excited to have two acres to run around in. It's just we're we're just so excited about this whole thing. And uh, unfortunately, ah. the listeners are going to have to hear more about it because I probably won't stop talking about it until we move. That's OK. Talk away. Happiness. Hey. People love to hear others talk about happy things. There's so much crap going on in the world that if you want to be excited and share all the wonderful things about your move, I, for one, am happy to listen because I'm just sitting here with a – you're going on and on about this, and I'm just sitting here with a big smile on my face. Like, have at well, it, fun. The listeners are going to have another big smile because they have a, we're going to have an opportunity to win a very large prize that's worth hundreds of dollars. And we're going to be announcing this. Keep your eye on our Facebook pages. We're going to be posting pictures of our new place, and we're looking for a name. We have to name the farm. So um, we are going to ask the listeners to help us with names, and the winner is going to win this very large prize that we're putting together. So uh, keep your eye out for that. That's going to be coming up here very shortly. Do I get to play? No. You can play, and actually you want to win this prize. You'll, you'll I want to win every prize. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for that. Now it's time for Tack and Habit. Choose Kentucky Performance Products Supplements because the horse that matters to you matters to KPP. This week, I want to speak with you about Elevate Maintenance Powder. This time of year, horses are consuming very little grass and may not be able to get enough natural vitamin E. Horses and riggers training, seniors, broodmares, and stallions often require additional levels of vitamin E to meet their needs. When you need to supplement with natural vitamin E, choose Elevate Maintenance Powder. Affordable, effective, and research proven. Elevate Maintenance Powder's vitamin E is nature's most powerful antioxidant, protecting your horse on the cellular level. Elevate Maintenance Powder supports the strong immune system and healthy muscle function necessary for top performance. It's affordable, it's easy to feed, and you can learn more about this and all their other products at kppusa.com. That's KPP. USA.com. Well, my tack and habit pick this week is a little, a little, I'm I'm speeding up spring here. I'm having all you people in the north that are getting snow and cold and everything start. You're going to have to start thinking about flies really soon. And and I know where you live, you get some flies, don't you? Uh, yeah, big ones. Now, you get the B-52s up there, or do you get the little greenheads like we used to have in Massachusetts that were so awful? No greenheads. That's one good thing that we don't have. We don't have. Actually, you know what? I have to say, the, the, the bugs are not terribly, terribly bad here. We get black flies. We get black flies, and that's mostly because, like those face flies, that's mostly because we live next door to a cow farm. Uh, that'll do it. But So that, and they're the most annoying ones, and they bite. 
Yep. Right. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're but so, for, the, for those people that don't know what we're talking about with the greenheads, there is two or three weeks in July. And when you live in the coastal Massachusetts where these greenheads come out and you just don't even want to go outside, uh, they are awful. Oh. They will carry away small children. <laughs> it's just they, they're nasty. They're biting. They're, them out. Oh, you can't smack them. They just don't die. I mean, it's just, they're wow. just. You got be, to beat them into the sand. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go to they the are. beach either, can you? You, 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 I, you can't. No, there's, they put up a sign um, at Cranes Beach in Ipswich. They put up a sign that says, um, Greenheads are out, no refunds. Because you're going to get eaten alive. <laughs> you are going to get eaten alive. Now, usually, if you go into the water, you have some protection because they they don't, you know, fly over into the the waves or whatever. The problem is the water's so damn cold, cold up there. You can't get in the water. <laughs> you got nowhere to go unless you have a tent. In that case, why bother going to the beach? <laughs> well, that's what we're going to talk about: is a tent for your horse, and that is the uh, wicker or the wicked fly sheet by Centaur. We bought one of these last year, and we didn't have an opportunity to check it out until last week. We got it out, and we tried it on, on Beaker and everything. This is one of the nicest, and you know we've been selling tack for, for 15 years. This is one of the nicest fly sheets we've seen. Uh, this Centaur fly sheet, it's only 69 bucks, but it is a nice, well-made, well-built fly sheet. Uh, it has the ultraviolet ray protection, uh, so in addition to you know, keeping the flies off, you're going you're gonna to save them from a sunburn. It has the moisture wicking waffle material and, and, and a protective mesh. It has this top layer that's stronger that goes across the horse's back, and that's a stronger piece of material. It has nylon shoulder linings. It has, uh, it has buckle closures. It is just, it's made with a contoured fit. We were very impressed by this thing, I have to tell you. I, and it's you're not a, a easy people to impress. No, not with and Jennifer, you know, isn't. But this is Jennifer approved. She she was putting it on him, going, "This is really nice." And now that we know we're moving to Florida, you know, we knew we were going to need one. Yeah. And you know, this is it's a. It, I just can't say enough good things about it. It fits. It seems to stay on. You know, we left him on it for or left it on him for a little while. Uh, it 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 has the gussets in the shoulders so that you don't have to worry about that. This is made by a, like a blanket. You know how most fly sheets aren't really, they're just a big square piece of material and they barely fit. And they fall off and everything else. This one has the, has the sur singles. And it just, it, it really, we were, we were impressed by this. Does it have leg, leg straps? Does it come no, with No, it doesn't have leg straps, but it has the tail okay. strap. So okay. that helps keep the back in place. Okay. And then it has the sur singles, the crisscross sur singles underneath. And it's okay. all made of the heavy duty nylon, the sur singles and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, very impressed, very impressed, and and I I can see how this would uh, uh, wick the moisture and how it would be cooler, the way it's designed because your heavier material is across the back and then it's a lighter material down the side, so it's going to help keep them cool. Yeah, um, I, I just which I like because you know sometimes that heavier material while it, while it does give protection from fighting stuff. flies, it's hard to wash. It doesn't get as clean I found as the lighter materials. And that plasticky oh. stuff I think makes them sweat too much. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, it's plastic. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a weave, but I, I like the combination of, uh, again, it's another solution item. It's it's not like, oh, let's just put some plastic over the horse and he'll be happy with that. It's, you know, there's a living, breathing animal under there. Don't sweat him out. I agree. So that is the Wicked Fly Sheet by Centaur. We'll put a link to it on our Facebook page and also on our Stable Scoop website at stablescoop.com, or you can search for Stable Scoop on Facebook. Well, that's my product of the week. By the way, that one comes in sizes. It's not sized like a blanket. It comes in pony, cob, horse, large, and extra large, and you'll see the sizing on, on the website or on the package if you find it in your store. But uh, this is one I, 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 you know, I'm saying that uh, we really liked. Well, then I'll have to get one. There you go. <laughs> I'll have to get one because I have three horses now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And fly season is coming. Soon. It's coming. <sighs> now, it'll be quicker for us because we'll be down there where it's 85. Just saying. Stop it. <laughs> You're not allowed to gloat until you actually get live. there. Okay. All right. I'll stop okay? gloating then. Just stop it. All right. I will. But you know what we got to do in the meantime is move, and that's kind of a pain in the butt. So Not when you're moving to Florida. That's true. It is going to become better. And you know what's interesting is we get on Route 75 here in Lexington, and we get off 75 in Ocala. You, you, it's the same road for 12 hours. 
12 That's hours okay. from here to there, and it, you never get off that road. You're on that road the entire day. That's... So it's very easy to get there. You don't even need your GPS. You just get on the road and get off the road. Okay. So that's nice. Well, that's it for today, Helena. We have to get out of here before the before tornadoes blow me away and can't continue the show anymore. So say say a prayer for us here in Kentucky and the Midwest who are getting hit pretty hard today. We I most certainly will. I will I'll ask Mother Nature to spare you. I just saw an announcement here on Facebook that uh, 10 people now have died uh, in the Midwest from these tornadoes that are now hitting. So, Uh-oh. Uh, in Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana, Arkansas, Illinois, and Missouri. This is a reminiscent of last year where, you know, those tornadoes went through and killed all those people. We had that fundraiser. Uh, let's hope, let's hope, uh, let's hope we don't see a replay of that and our, our, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of those that are living that right now. Well, I think that's it for this week, Helena. That is. That's plenty. We, we crammed in a lot this week. Stay safe, and uh, we will be back next week with more.